See, what they don't know is they're tuning in to DBYT Podcast. My name is Taisha Hans, and this is my show where I'll explore the ins and outs of the world around me. You can tune in every Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Disclaimer. Explicit content will be discussed on this episode. If you with it, stay tuned. If not, I'll see you soon. All right. So on this episode, I really wanted to get y'all an update on what's been going on with me for the past, what, like six, seven months? Yeah, I know it's been a really long time, but we're going to get into that right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to DBYT Podcast. I'm Taisha, as y'all know or may not know. And if you don't know, now you do know. So let me tell you where I've been for like the past seven months. I was on a good start, and then my life really kind of took a turn. So uh, it was the day before Thanksgiving, right? And I got a call. And... I had been wondering what was wrong with me for about six, seven months prior to that call. And me being the type of person I am, I already had self-diagnosed myself and kind of was like just waiting for somebody to confirm it for me. All right, so it was the end of March when I first started noticing like I was drinking a lot more than I'm used to drinking. Like I had started dieting and trying to take better care of myself but at the same time I'm like extremely thirsty and then I started drinking like a dietary tea like every day and I'm like okay maybe it's the tea that's making me dehydrated but as long as I drink water and I should be I should be pretty straight you know and I'm like maybe I need to start drink stop drinking this tea because I can't hold my liquids like I'm going to the bathroom like 20 times a day like it's crazy right and I'm like I can't even sleep because every time I drink I have to use the bathroom but at night obviously I'm tired so it was like a very bad cycle at that point and moving on to April I started getting more issues and I was experiencing cotton mouth and I was getting even more tired due to my vicious cycle that I was going through. And then I had this fruity taste in my mouth all the time. I'm like, this is so weird. Like, I don't feel normal. I don't feel like myself. So I'm drinking buku water all the time. And I just didn't understand why my mouth was always dry. Like, how do you put this much liquid into your body and everything is still so dry? Like, I don't understand. So with being in school, I figured that I could just be tired from like doing all this work all the time, but it wasn't, it was just the cycle that I was trying to sleep, going to the bathroom, drinking until I was satisfied again. And then it was like repeat, repeat, you know? So May came around and I was out of school and surely enough, you know, I had more problems coming into my life. So I'm going to the gym and everything so like with my parents and all and after every workout session I was feeling it like not a good feel you know so like my legs would get like stupid cramps in them and they would like sink inward so it's like some demon junk (laughs) like I'm like bro why why me you know at this point because I'm like I don't know what else to do so at like night I'm sleeping with icy hot and cramp pills by my bedside because I'm like, these cramps in my legs that I'm getting are unbearable. And I'm like, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to live a healthier lifestyle and whatnot. And it's like, I can't, I can't do it. So I'm just feeling like I'm dying. And I know that's bad to say, but that's how I felt, right? So, all right. The weight I was trying to lose Um, for like the last year had came off of me in a matter of months mind you I was a hundred and eighty plus pounds (laughs) like for like a year and a half and yeah um I'm gonna be honest I did not feel the most confident like yeah I faked it till I made it because honey if you follow me on Instagram you probably like ain't no way she was 180 but I 
I wouldn't make that up. I was 180 pounds. So throughout uh, the summer, I am losing stupid amounts of weight. And by uh, August, I ended up being 130 and the lowest I had got to was 126 pounds, right? So, all right, anyways, back to the weight was coming off, right? So I'm shocked. I'm loving my new body. It's what I've been working so hard for, and I had it. It was the start of my junior year in college, and throughout the semester, I noticed that um, my vision at certain times of the day would be worse than other times. And I figured, you know, I'm in college. I'm tired. I'm always doing something extra, you know, so I'm tired. And I'd be okay because it would clear up with time. But little did I know, it was like my body was like really shutting down on me. So I had learned to accept my new body and what it was doing for me, even if I didn't understand like why I had changed so dramatically. And like I had gone home because, you know, we have, you know, breaks and stuff throughout the year. And I had went to the doctor. And at this time, I'm just feeling like, okay, this is my body. This is what it's doing. I'm getting older. So I didn't tell my doctor what I had been going through that past year because I thought I was getting better with time and I'd be back to my old self with even more time. So about a month and a half had gone by and I was home for another break. Um, it was Thanksgiving break, actually. And I had gone to the doctor again because of my previous conversations with her, uh, you know, she had thought I had something. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and, okay, so, um, it's November 27th. That is the day before Thanksgiving. And I'm in my mom's room, sitting on her bed, and we laughing and stuff. And I had been to the doctor's earlier that day, that morning, actually. And I had got my lab results back from my doctor um, through, you know, my phone and whatnot. And we are just looking at, like, all the numbers and graphs and stuff. And we like, we were not really understanding, like, what we're looking at. So we're looking everything up on Google. Like, okay, what are the number? I mean, a little, sorry. What are the normal numbers for this? And what is this? And what does this mean? You know what I'm saying? And then, to our surprise, the numbers didn't match any of the charts that we were seeing online so we were like what does this mean and so i kid you not the phone rang and i answered and the lady on the other line was like how are you feeling miss hans are you aware of your glucose levels you need to come to urgent care immediately and all i could remember was how anxious i was feeling because i'm like i'm fine you know this is my new normal you know like this is me now so after months of researching and worrying and wondering um i had finally got the answers that i had been searching for and i had been diagnosed with diabetes and it was like it was something new but it was so familiar but it changed my life so quick <laughs> because it was like i had been living with diabetes for all this time and I I like in the back of my head like due to my research and all I knew I had diabetes but it was like when a doctor said it was like dang that just really put the the stamp on the paper for me and like verify a lot of my my doubts and my wonders you know so it was like I had to really learn how to live my life with like new restrictions and just to like keep my life because my levels were like dummy high and like what they were saying it was like oh my gosh like your lumbers are at stroke levels and da 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 I'm at the doctors at this time well I'm at the hospital technically and I'm just like they're like <laughs> I'm sorry but um the doctors are asking me while I'm there they like how did you let your glucose get out of hand like this and x y and z and I'm just like bro I don't even know what y'all are talking about like literally I just found out when y'all called me to come in and one of the doctors was telling me that um I could have fell into a diabetic coma and that people don't understand the dangers of like diabetes and stuff so 
yeah it scared me and it took me a long time to get back to this place to where I was comfortable enough to be like I'm gonna sit down and talk about it because like that junk is scary like you could have really you could really lose your life if you don't like be healthy and like treat your body like it's like precious for real and the crazy thing is I thought I was being like healthy <laughs> so I'm like I'm laughing because you know it it's not a joke like diabetes is definitely not a joke it should be taken so serious and I like encourage you guys to go and learn more about it if you want to because it's not a I mean for me I believe it's genetic uh, my grandmother had it and I guess she passed it on to me um, but you can also get diabetes at any time because I'm 21 I had it since I was 20 that's not a, a like a normal age that people are usually diagnosed at they are usually diagnosed like with type 1 at an earlier age like you know four or five years old and then type 2 you usually get that in your 40s and I'm like I'm smack dead in the middle and literally they still trying to find out like what what am I what type are you and what's going on with you and why is this happening now and x y and z so yeah I know that's a lot it's a lot but it it made me look at my life a little different so I had to take some time back and just evaluate my purpose you know and <laughs> it sounds crazy like I'm just listening to myself and I'm just like wow like I really took seven months off from doing something that I had started to love because I, I had started loving making content for you guys and for myself, like just to self-reflect and talk to people around me. And then I just kind of like shut down when that happened. And I just, I guess I wanted to make sure I was okay, you know. Um, What else can I say about this? Uh, <laughs> December time came around. And I was blind for like three weeks. Like uh, the medicine that they had gave me, which is insulin. I had to give myself insulin shots and whatever. Um, I lost my sight for three weeks. And I kid you not, that was the most scariest time of my life. I was so stressed out because I'm in Valdosta. That's where I go to school. And I'm by myself, you know. All my, like, all my regular friends and stuff like they are back at home and you know they live in their life and I'm like I'm stuck in this dorm room by myself blind I can't go anywhere by myself because I literally cannot see and I'm stressed out because it's finals week <laughs> like what to do in a time like this you know so it's like <laughs> I had to learn quick I had to learn really quick and I'm a visual learner so my mom was like the biggest help for me and she was all, she was there all the time facetiming me making sure I'm straight you know what I'm saying like talking to me making sure I wasn't alone in like in this entirety that's a real one that that was awesome to have her help me especially during like my study sessions boy when I tell you I had to learn with my, like, like I guess it's auditorial listening. Oh, auditorial listening. Auditorial learning. I am a visionary. I have to see things. But the, those few uh, weeks and days or whatever I was down there, oh, I learned real quick. It was a lot of repetition. It was a lot of hard work. And <laughs> honestly, I came out uh, making Dean's List for fall 2019 at Bad Austin. That was dope. I passed. Like I got um I got exempt from some things, you know. But the for the things that I didn't get exempt for, I worked really hard. I had to still present in my classes and I, I'm trying to figure out how to deal with this because remember I'm I got diagnosed the day before Thanksgiving. I'm back at school the very next week by myself. I lost my sight that Saturday after uh, Thanksgiving so I'm just I was in under a lot of pressure and I didn't know how to cope with everything but I'm in a better place now so <laughs> all that being said 
uh that's what's really been going on these past seven months i've just been learning how to gain my confidence back and be able to come back to what had me me happy well like yeah it makes me happy to make content and i enjoy it like it gives me something to do it gives me something to look forward to you know and just to see like y'all feedback on my material is it it helps so yeah um yeah (laughs) so again i'm telling you should i have diabetes i don't know which type i have but my journey isn't over it's really just beginning but i promise you guys that i will try to be more consistent in my upcoming episodes and the rest of this season should be pretty straight should be pretty dope honestly i mean i got people working with me and we collaborating on a few things um for example we have a black lives matter episode coming out soon i ain't gonna say when i'm gonna just say soon and honestly y'all just should be looking out for um episodes just to be dropped at random times on something I'm going to try to stay on a Wednesday consistent basis, but life gets hard, (laughs) but I will try my very hardest to do that, but thank you all for tuning in, and thanks for listening to my little story, Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it, if you did, you know, tell me in the comments, tell me on my Instagram, if you're not on my Instagram, it's underscore Sana. Yeah, that's underscore Sanai, S-E-N-I-H, um, my last name backwards. Next week, we're going to be talking about music, black artists in the music industry. Um, that's more so local, community-based right now. But, I mean, hey, we got to support each other and get exposure somehow. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that. I'm going to be putting y'all on to some five people, honestly. I mean, I personally listen to their music. So I hope y'all enjoy that. And if you do, you know, go download their music, go stream their music, all that stuff. So, yeah, it's been pretty dope. All right. So that's all we have for DBYT today. I want to thank myself and everybody else who tuned in for this updated episode y'all can follow me on instagram at underscore sanai my snapchat taisha 37 or even my twitter at it's underscore taisha h if you have any comments suggestions topics or questions feel free to hit me up on any of my social media uh as i said earlier you can tune in next week uh where we'll be talking about the music and black artistry in my town um yeah i'm taisha and i promise i won't bite my tongue Making me feel so dumb Can't explain it, feel so numb So let me think about it, oh About it, about it,